One of the worst things that can happen during your event or race is the need to do a bowel movement. So what can you do to help prevent this? Watch on to find out. Hey, how's it going? You're watching Iron Will, your place to find tips, tricks and experience in triathlon, multi-sport and endurance events and training. I think most of us have been there at some point. You wake up, you try to go number two, but nothing really comes out. So you decide to go for a run anyway. You get about a kilometer or so into the run and you start to feel a bit of a grumbly, odd feeling in your stomach. Maybe even that sort of painful bloaty sensation. You need to drop a depth charge. So to avoid prairie dogging for the rest of your run, you have to cut it short and make a shortcut back home. If it's a training day, this may not be too bad since you can probably go out and do your training later on that day or after you've been to the toilet. But if this is happening during an event, it can be an absolute nightmare. The lines for the portaloos or maybe using the portaloo after maybe hundreds or even thousands of people have used it before you. Just think about that smell. And you don't really want to have to need to go while you're on the course because of course then that stuffs up your time and you've got to deal with lines for the portaloos at the drink stations and the whole idea of touching cloth the rest of the race isn't a good thought now, of course you know one of the easiest ways to get around this is to just go while you're in the comfort of your home or hotel or wherever you're staying but that's quite often easier said than done. The not my loo syndrome is a real thing and also race day nerves can quite often get the better of people. There are however a few things that you can do to help assist your body in honking out a dirt snake so that it doesn't affect your event or training. And just as a quick note I am not going to be recommending laxatives. Sometimes laxatives will work but unfortunately quite often they work a little bit later than expected. So to avoid runs during your runs, try not to take laxatives, try to go a more natural route. Firstly, one way to allow for an easier, faster and more efficient poop is to make the passageway of your bowels as straight as possible. How you can do this? Just to change the way you sit. There was a study done with Japanese researchers where they fed test subjects a luminous substance that would show up during x-rays. When those test subjects then needed to go to their bathroom visit, they put an x-ray on them to see sort of how the food was passing through the body as it came out the other end. And through this they were able to prove the mechanism of this small little muscle that goes around your gut at the bowel. So this little lasso that sits around your gut pulls your gut into different positions whether you're sitting, standing and squatting. When you're standing it pulls the gut and creates a massive sort of kink in it. That means that this can help prevent accidental prison breaks while you're standing and running. While you are sitting it partially straightens out but not 100%. One of the best ways is actually to do a squat. When you are squatting it completely lets go of that line and your bowels straighten out for a fast, efficient and satisfying poop. Now what's that? You don't have a squatting toilet at home and you don't really feel like squatting on the toilet? Well don't worry, me neither. But there is one way that you can help simulate the idea of squatting while you're going to the bathroom without actually having to go to a squatty potty. And to do that all you need to do is have something which raises your legs up. So have some sort of a low footrest, maybe even a couple of books, a few magazines, something like that. Anything that will raise your knees above parallel. Then lean forward, keep your back straight, maybe even think of getting into that aero position and you've created an aero position for your rear end. Training your gut and creating that habit is very important. After all, the more you do a certain thing, the easier that thing becomes in future. So if you get into the habit of dropping the kids off at the pool before you go for your morning run, then on race day or event day or on your big run day, you won't have any problems. So one way to do this is to be as repeatable as possible. Try and get in the habit of going to the bathroom at the same time every day. This may mean getting up early every day regardless of whether you have an early morning run or not because come race day you're going to be getting up early so your body needs to know that it's early morning I've got to go 
flush the bowels. Physical movement is also a great way to help get things moving internally in the right direction. After all, with running, you are bouncing up and down quite a lot, and that gets things jiggling inside your gut, which can help trigger a movement. So one thing that can help you in slaying the mud dragon with ease is to go for a short warm-up after waking up. Nothing too major, of course, maybe just to run around the block or something like that, but something that gets your body jiggling and gets the internals moving. And now we come to food, fiber both soluble and insoluble, is incredibly important in helping regulate your bowel movements. Too much fiber, and you might be going too much throughout the day. Not enough fiber, and you may not even be able to squeeze one out. So striking that right balance is very critical. And you don't really want to just load up on fiber all of a sudden the day before the race. Try and start to increase your fiber content just a little bit in the days, maybe even weeks leading up to the event. Now fruit, especially things like apples, something with a skin that is edible, are really good for you in terms of fiber. The internal part of it is normally a soluble fiber and the outside of it is normally an insoluble fiber. So those two things can bind, create great bowel movements. You know what they say, an apple a day keeps constipation at bay. They don't, nobody. Nobody says that. Water and salt are also incredibly important. Fun little poo fact, 75% of your poo is made up of water, and the majority of the poos that you do will be the same amount of salt in them, so the same saltiness of the poo. Not that I recommend tasting it by any means. And while most of us, especially those having a Western style diet, won't have any problems with keeping our salt levels nice and high, when you are exercising, you do lose a lot of those salts in your body. So it might be worthwhile popping an electrolyte tablet during or after, maybe even before your exercise. Lack of water can also lead to constipation. As I mentioned before, around 75% of your fecal matter content is made up of water. But that's a little bit plus or minus because your body also needs water to survive. So if you're not drinking enough water, then your body needs to suck that water out of the food that you're eating. And that can be a little harder to push out down the other end than a well-balanced, well-oiled poo. Another thing that you can add to your diet that will help increase the health of your gut and in turn help increase the health of your poo is pre and probiotics. So probiotics are the actual little living organisms, the bacteria within your gut, and prebiotics are those things which that bacteria feeds on. Also, do your best to try and avoid bad foods for your gut. And you know what those bad foods are. Alcohols, bad fats, uh, overly sugary things. These can destroy your gut bacteria, and as such, your poo health won't be nearly as good. Coffee is a great stimulant, and for a lot of people, it can also help stimulate those nether regions. A significant amount of people feel the urge to go number two when or after they have had their morning cup of joe. So one way that you might be able to help stimulate your bowels is to have a nice warm cup of coffee, preferably after you've already had a nice big glass of water. The timing of your meals can also be very important in determining when you need to make a deposit to the porcelain bank. If you want to be able to go first thing in the morning, then it might be a good idea to try and have your larger meals earlier in the day, and as you progress, make those meals smaller and smaller. That way, dinner being your last meal of the day will be the smallest possible, and as such requires the least amount of digestion. Also for your dinner, it can be very helpful to try and avoid certain food groups, such as those really high in fat, high in simple sugars, or alcohol, since those can tend to clog you up a little bit in the morning. In regards to timing, if you feel the need to defecate at night, but you know, your event is in the morning. One thing I try and do is to hold it in. Now, obviously you don't want to be holding in your poo too often, but holding it in from night until morning allows your gut to sort of accumulate more in there and sweep it all out in the morning in one go. Analyzing the health of your poo is quite important. If you want to be able to do your own shit analysis, then check out the Bristol Stool Scale. This is a scale from one to seven, which shows sort of how healthy your poo is. One being 
hard chocolate bullets up to seven being green apple splatters. You want to be somewhere in the middle, somewhere around three to four. If you'd like to find out more about your own gut, then I would recommend the book Gut by Julia Enders. This is where I got the inspiration for this video. You can get this via printed copy, digital copy, or as I listen to it via Audible. And no, I'm not sponsored by Audible or anything. I just really enjoy the idea of listening to and learning from a book during my exercise, during my long, tedious runs and cycles. And this book, Gut, is just a really interesting book. If you'd like to watch my previous video about gut pain, I'll leave a link up here. If you want swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.